I was thinking we spent so much time building that custom contact instrument from my incredibly cheap cello that I bought off of Amazon, and it seemed a shame to not actually have a little bit of fun with it. So let's do that. I've done five fun little experimental contact things, and the first three, just adding some verb, experimenting with pitch bends, and spreading out the root notes are sort of like contact hacks that you can do behind the scenes. And the last two, lows and delay and pulsing, are simply adding some fun plugins. Now, if you haven't seen any of the previous episodes, one of the big things that I love doing with instruments like this is creating the random start times. So there are four passes of this cello with random start times and different loop lengths. The idea being every time you hit the key, it's gonna sound different. And I'm just going to do a quick demonstration of that with our first patch that literally just has this reverb on it. Volume up, expression all the way down. What I love the most about this effect is it literally is like there are four players sitting in front of you randomly playing individual notes. So it's different every single time. So I quickly realized after the fact that when I exported my samples from Cubase to drop them into contact in a previous episode, they actually weren't pan, they were all mono. That has been fixed, and everything we're gonna listen to today is all in stereo. And what I did was take the first and fourth voice, pan them hard left and right, second and third voice sort of in the middle. So it's kind of like more a synth sound or orchestra effect kind of panning, and not really trying to put the cellos kind of if you were looking at the orchestra like over here on the far right side of the stage where they would normally go. Okay, let's talk about pitch bends. I went and created a new version of our instrument and underneath mapping editor and the list view, you can select individual samples. Now I've put every sample in its own group so that we have discrete control over each one. If you look down here, I've added a pitch bend mod under the source, and this is the amount of pitch bend that basically the MIDI controller, pitch bend CC, will bend the pitch of the sample. Now if you keep your eye on this fader, which right now is at 1.8 steps, you see that it changes as I flip through the samples and select them. So the idea here is if I play a high C and then bend the pitch up and you can see my pitch wheel in contact. Let's reset it, there we go. So if I start going up, Of the four players, one's barely going up, one's going up a considerable amount, one's hardly going up at all. You can edit this really easily. Let's take this guy, which I think is the most, let's make him a full octave and see what happens. So you really have a lot of control over this. We'll put it back to like here, let's say. Now another effect that I like to do a lot is just barely move the pitch wheel and kind of make it sound like the players are doing just a quarter step bend. They always end up bending more than that. But I'm gonna play our original source note, which is G. 
and just do a slow bend. Keep your eye on the pitch wheel right here in the bottom corner of contact. So you really are making it sound like players doing something or some funky chorus effect going in. Now what I really love to do, we've got our one, two, three, four quiet sounds. That's what we've been listening to. I'm going to take the first one. It's set to this. I'm going to turn it up a little bit. I'm going to click invert and I'm going to grab the third one and invert that as well and turn that up a little bit more. Now when we do the pitch wheel, as a matter of fact, let's listen to this MIDI. You can see the pitch wheel. I've got the MIDI going up and then down and then back up. But listen to what the pitch does since we chose to invert two of the controllers. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Another thing that I love to do with custom contact instruments is spread out the root notes. You may remember that our original note, and I use that term very loosely, was this G up here. So all four of my cello notes started on that note, and that's what I have set as the root note for the samples. It's very, very simple to just Grab this, throw that up an octave, and go to the second one. Let's go a tritone. Let's take that and maybe move that down. Now, instead of the unison G, again, <laughs> the loosely unison G, we have this. Same thing if you play it lower, it's just the crazy cool chord. And of course you can do this exact same thing with the louder notes. It's just a lot more easy to hear in the quiet notes because they're semi-consistent in pitch. The loud ones just sort of go all over the place. But that's the beauty of all this. You can experiment with it. You can try all kinds of different things. You could have four instances of contact with this instrument and have them all set to sort of react to your controllers in different ways. And all of a sudden you have 16 cellos and you can even pan them the way you want. As a matter of fact, let me show you how to do that. We are right here in this exact same window and the same way you would click on a sample to change the pitch bend, you click on the sample and what do we have here? Panning from negative 100 to 100. So you can see 100, negative 100, and then those are the two that are sort of in the middle. So you can set these to anything you want and position your cellos kind of anywhere you want on the stage. For lows and delay, I'm really looking at emphasizing the low end and Naturally, with sampling, when you take a sample that's very high and drop it four or five octaves, it's going to lose a lot of top end. It's going to lose a lot of gain. So I've scooped out a little bit and boosted quite a bit. I think I've got about 9 dB of gain here on the preamp. And then I have this Echo Boy setting, which I just pulled up and tweaked from scratch. I'm not a big fan on presets. I spend more time clicking through them when I could have just done something on my own. So that's what I use for Echo Boy. And here's what it sounds like.
this is just a very simple extension of what we've already been talking about. Um, but I did have on the other sounds that didn't have black hole, which was only the first cue. I had the Valhalla verb on some of them on this exact same setting, which is just what I tweaked when I threw it on there. Love, love, love Valhalla. And then I've got Decapitator at the end. I thought it'd be easier just to stick with sound toys at the moment. They are kind of one of my go-to effects companies. And then I've got Tremolator on there. Again, I just pulled something up and sort of tweaked it. But it's interesting because it has a very cool, like... Right? Um, a lot of times when I have this kind of a slower rhythm, maybe let's even go to two bars, I would use that in the low end. So it'd be something like. And if I wanted to have something up higher, I would probably end up doing notes instead. So you can do the usual sort of sixteenths or eighth notes. It's just a cool combo of sort of traditional orchestra and kind of modern technology. So those are just some of my kind of off the cuff ideas of how I would take that instrument and use it in a score in different ways. But what I'm really dying to know is how would you use it? What kind of effects do you like to put on it? And do you get under the hood in contact? Do you like doing something cool that maybe I don't even know about? Please let me know in the comments. And if you didn't realize it, this instrument is uh, available on my Patreon for $1. You can do anything you want with it because we recorded it ourselves together. So the other thing I would really love is to hear how you use it in your music.